Hey, badass business owners, welcome back to the show. I want to talk about employees because employees are some of those things that can be the most rewarding things in the world. They could be the most time consuming things in the world, and they can be the most frustrating things in the world. Let's face it. We cannot grow our business the majority of the time without having good employees. They do the vast majority of the work, especially as you continue to grow as a business owner and delegate more and more and you become less and less as an employee and spend more and more time as a business owner. Unfortunately, employees come with a lot of responsibility on your part and they take up a lot of time. Probably the number one complaint that I hear from people is, about their bad employees, okay? Because bad employees, you have to ask yourself, are they really bad employees or is it because of you? What's causing them to be this bad employee? Now, in some cases, it might be you just hired wrong. You just brought in the wrong person. You were desperate for somebody and you hired the wrong person. Yes, you do need to address this problem. That doesn't necessarily mean you gotta throw them out. We're gonna talk about today a few things that you need to be doing with your time to maximize it, to be able to take those employees to the next level and how to handle some of the more frustrating things that I hear from small business owners all of the time. But the first thing you have to get your arms around is the fact that as a small business owner, your people are a necessary evil and it doesn't get any easier. Well, it gets easier on one hand because you get better at handling stuff, but it doesn't get easier because as you continue to grow, the odds are you're going to bring in even more employees and you're going to be in this continuous cycle of hiring the best people, training them, holding them accountable, growing them, developing them, whatever the case may be. So employees are pretty much going to be stuck as part of your routine. And if you're not making it part of your routine, that is part of the problem. You see, you have to make sure that part of your weekly goal is how do you make your employees even better? And we're gonna talk about that as we look at several of the different items. So what I thought we would do is go through several of the different things that I'm constantly hearing from people as I do my coaching calls or I meet with people to talk about folks. Now, over the years, I have hired thousands, and I mean thousands of employees, and I have been a leader over thousands and thousands of employees. And sitting down, coaching, developing, and holding people accountable is something that I've had to do way too much. Today, luckily, I don't really have to do that except for through influence, which is one of the hardest things to do. But I will tell you that it's also rewarding when you start seeing the results of the time and energy that you put in the people, because there's nothing better than when you look back and you see what you did to help these folks, and then you see their success later on, whether that success is with you or with other companies, because I firmly believe that if we spend the time and energy into the employees that we have today, we make them better business owners and better employees for other people, because sometimes they go off and start their own business, or they do whatever the case may be. And it really can come back to the impact that you had on them when they were with you. So I really want you to keep that in mind, that as a great business owner, you also are striving to be a great leader, a leader in your community, but also with your employees as well as your customers. Now let's talk about employee problems, shall we? Probably the biggest complaint that I get all the time is people go, oh, this employee, they totally suck. They're bringing down the rest of the crew. They're, they'd never get anything done. All they do is yip yap. All they do is take breaks. They just are punching in, punching out, whatever the case may be. It's usually around this concept of a bad employee like I was mentioning earlier. The first thing you need to ask yourself, are they really a bad employee or is it your fault? Because a lot of times when we have a bad employee, it's really on us. Not saying they're not a bad employee, but what I'm saying is you can't jump to that conclusion because you haven't even probably dived in and figured out what the problem is. Probably one of the most frustrating things that I used to experience in my old career and with talking to people today is a lot of times one of the first things I ask is, have you sat down and have you even tried to have a conversation with this bad employee? And I can't tell you how many times I hear, well, no, not yet. Or we've, I've kind of mentioned it to them. 
All right, first you got to stop. This kind of maybe I'm thinking about it. No wonder why they're a bad employee. You never cut it off when it was starting. If you continue to let someone have bad behavior and continue doing it, you're the reason that this employee has become a cancer in your business. And I will tell you, the other employees are keeping an eye on you. They're watching the fact that you're letting this person get away with stuff and you're doing nothing about it. So instead of just letting down this one employee who's your bad employee, you're also letting down all the other employees in your business because you do not handle confrontation or holding these people accountable. So let's talk about confrontation for a moment because we don't like confrontation. Every time we have confrontation, what happens is we think of people fighting. Now, the reason that people feel as if they're having to confront people and having this confrontation is because they're not thinking about it through the lens of, I'm giving honest feedback to my employees so they can be better at what it is that they do. Now you can't help it if somebody is going to feel like they're being confronted. None of us like to hear we're doing something wrong or that we could be doing better at something. How you do it and how you present yourself is really the key to the entire thing. You need to make sure that you let your employees know that you're going to be having conversations with them on a regular basis. Those conversations need to be a mixture of when they're doing really well, making sure they understand that you see that they're growing, they're doing really good, how they handle the customer. Be very specific. Hey, I really like how you handled that customer right now. Or, hey, that thing you just did, that was amazing. What made you do that? Or, I love the idea that you brought to me. Make sure you're telling them the things they're doing right. Now, when you're having to hold them accountable to something that they did wrong, they know that you're not just picking out things that they're doing wrong. And it's important that when they first do it, that you hold them accountable right away. The first time someone's late to work, you need to have the conversation. Way too often, though, we want to be a smart ass about it, right? We want to say, hmm, nice of you to show up to work today, you know, things like that. And that's, I would do that just to, I am a professional smart ass, I will tell you. Um, but I realize that that really does not help the situation and it doesn't make it any better. So you can have the thought up here, but it's what comes out here that you need to really make sure that you're paying attention to. Because what you want to do is pull that employee aside and say, hey, I understand there might've been a reason it could have been a car accident. You know, you could ask them, Hey, you know, why were you running late today? But then at the same time, they might give you a really good answer. But what you need to do is say, okay, I understand that. But in the future, I really need you to call me and we need to see about you possibly leaving earlier if this is going to become an issue because you need to be on time. They're going to understand it. So you need to acknowledge why they were late, but you need to also let them know that it's unacceptable. What happens is it's like drawing a line in the sand. If the employee thinks they can get away with it this time, and then you don't say anything, and then they do it again, and you still don't say anything, what is going to ever make them think you're going to say something on the third, fourth, fifth, sixth time? I can't tell you how many people have had an employee that's late every single week like clockwork for months. And when I ask them if they've even had the conversation with them, the answer is no. You must have the conversation. It's important that that employee knows exactly what they're doing well and what they're doing wrong. Now, something I'm going to encourage you to do is anytime you have a conversation with an employee about something they should be doing better is I want you to jot it down. I want you to write it down on a piece of paper, put it in a file, have a notebook that's your employee notebook for whenever you have conversations with people. This is important because there's going to be times you're going to have to reference back to previous conversations. And I can guarantee you the employee is going to go, no, I don't remember when we talked about that. They absolutely remember when you talked about that, but they're not going to tell you they remember. So now you can pull out the book and you can say when you had that conversation. I used to have a notebook, just one of those little composition uh, notebooks that people have for school and I would write the employee's name on it and then that page was dedicated to that employee. This way, whenever I had a conversation with them, I would have the notebook right there and I could reference to the previous conversations that we had. That's probably gonna be the easiest way for you is just to grab a notebook and just put it in a drawer somewhere and when you need it for when you have those sit down meetings, you have a page that's dedicated to that employee. And you can even jot down that you found the things they were doing well. So if they start accusing you of not telling them when they're doing something right, you can say, hey, remember on this date? Remember when I told you about this? And remember when I told you about that? It helps offset that. Which brings up a really good point that I want to talk about. Don't be surprised if when you sit down with this employee, they start to deflect. It's really common for an employee to say, yeah, but you let so-and-so do this, or you let such and such do this, or you don't even come to work on time. How am I supposed to come to work on time? That's going to make you want to attack and come back at them. 
Do not do that. The minute any employee starts to deflect or say, yeah, buts or point to other employees, let them know that you're handling all those other situations with that employee and what now you are having a conversation about them and their performance. Do not let them deflect the conversation. They will do that. And I have people in my own family that do that. You've probably noticed in your own life that you have people that minute you start to have a conversation or something, it's yeah, but such and such. Kids do it all the time. They blame the other brother or sister or whatever sibling for something that they did when they're being held accountable. Um, your employees are going to do the same thing. It's something we've done since we were children. So don't be surprised that they do that. Also, as part of that thing, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but I just want to reemphasize it. Do not escalate. If an employee starts to raise their voice, starts to get angry, no matter how ticked off you get, it's really important that you remain calm, you remain seated, 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 whatever. Um, but what you want to do is you want to go, you know what, right now I can see that you're agitated. Uh, tell you what, I'm not yelling at you. I'm not screaming at you. I'm not cussing at you. I would appreciate it if you would sit down so we can have an adult conversation. Um, if they continue to, to blow up and have their issues, what I recommend at that point is to say, you know what, you're going to have to make a choice right now. Do you care about your job? And do you care about getting better? Because if so, that's what this conversation is about. If you don't care about your job and you want to continue to scream and yell, then we can go ahead and part ways right now because I will take it as you are wanting to quit at this moment. Now, that's an extreme case. In most cases, you can go ahead and get them to calm down a little bit. Now, a couple quick things that I want to make sure that we address in this entire conversation, one of which is a lot of times when we have a bad employee, it's not because the employee is bad. We get frustrated with them because they don't seem to be doing the job correctly. And when you have an employee that isn't doing the job correctly, it's really important that you look in the mirror. Have you trained them? And I don't just mean tell them what to do. Telling someone what to do doesn't mean you've trained them. Honestly, everybody learns things at a different level. Some people pick things up quickly. I know I do. And other people, it takes three, four, five, ten times. And I'm going to be honest, there's times when it's like that with me just because it's not in my wheelhouse or whatever the case may be. So you want to make sure that you spend the quality time to train someone on how to do their job perfectly. Yes, there is a time when it becomes ridiculous when you've shown somebody something 10 times and they're just choosing not to do it. The best way to handle those situations is when you're having that meeting with that employee is to go, okay, have I shown you how to do it? Well, yes. Have I answered all of your questions about how to do it? Yes. Have I, you know, just start asking questions and then say, okay, at this point, the only thing I'm left with is that you're choosing not to do it correctly. Remember, everything is a choice. Either they're trying or they're not trying. Either they're paying attention or they're not. I was talking to someone yesterday and they had a great example of the employee is saying they were never trained on something. The business owner has trained them and then remembered and recalled that every time he was doing more training, this employee would always wander off and go do other things. I'm like, but did you say anything to the employee? That's a great time to have that conversation with the employee saying, maybe you would be better at this if you quit wandering off. Never mind the fact to hold them accountable for wandering off. That's a whole different issue. Once again, this all comes down to having a conversation with the employee. You've got to talk to them. You cannot be surprised that an employee doesn't get better if they're never held accountable for what it is that they do, and you've never trained them on how to do whatever it is that you want them to do. And by the way, if let's just say you did hire someone and they were the wrong hire, you have to make a choice at that stage when you realize this. You either have to identify the fact that they're never going to change and start coaching them and counseling them out, or you need to say, I think I can turn this person around. Maybe they didn't come in with all the skills I thought they had, but now I'm going to train them and make sure that I give them the tools that they need to be successful. So just because you hired a bad hire, it doesn't necessarily mean you automatically terminate them. It means you need to step back and either start coaching them and get rid of them or coaching them to improve them at that stage because they have to make a decision. I always say, I'd rather hire someone with a fantastic attitude, a can-do attitude, who I can teach how to do whatever I need them to do versus taking someone who's really good at what they do, but they are bad attitude, always late, think they walk on water. I'd rather fire that person. Yes, it's going to hurt in that moment, but that person is hurting all of my other uh, employees, not to mention my customers, by the way. Do you think your customers don't notice on the job when you have a bad employee? Do you not think your customers don't sense when someone's really bad with customer service? They are a cancer to your other employees and to your customers. And therefore, because this is a show about knowing your numbers, 
You invest a lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of money into these employees because it takes time to be able to train them, right? But the other thing that costs you money when it comes to your numbers is when they are poor at what they're doing, they are costing you money through lost uh, through waste, through bad customer service, through all these other things that impact your business. Therefore, it's costing you money. So developing your employees is huge for your business and the profitability of what you have. It is part of your numbers. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind is that most employees are giving you about 85% of what they are capable of. In some cases, it could be as low as 80%. Your goal is how do you get them to 90%, 80, take an 80 to an 85, an 85 to a 90, a 90 to maybe a 95. The reason that you can't get them to 100% is, let's face it, you're the 100% busting your butt in your business. That's the bar. You might be able to find one or two employees that you're very lucky and you get the best of the best, and they're going to be right up there with you, 99, 100, maybe 100%, maybe they're better than you, okay? But most of your employees are just firing on doing what they need to do to survive. And if you have a low bar on what they need to do to survive, don't be shocked that you're getting even less than 80%. I can guarantee you if an employee is giving you 70%, that's on you because you're letting them do that. You have not raised their expectations. You have not set clear expectations and you sure the heck have not held them accountable to the expectations that you have. So if your employees are on that lower side of productivity, I promise you, it's probably you. It's really, really important that you have these tough conversations with your employees, that you document it, that you write it down, that you're telling them the good along with the bad, that you have annual reviews and you let them know how they're doing and you're constantly having this. I know it's a lot of time for you, but here's the thing. These are people that are representing you and your business out in the field. They're the ones that are face-to-face -face with the customers that you're trying to serve. These are the people that are either creating you money or they are costing you money. Either way, you need to make sure you're having this dialogue. Employees are hard. There are some business owners who will never ever deal with having employees because they have no desire whatsoever to deal with this stuff. And that is fine. There are people who are listening to this right now that have never had an employee, have no desire to have an employee. And there's others that used to have employees that finally get rid of them and just took their business backwards and said, but if your goal is to grow your business, employees are going to be unfortunately a necessary evil but they can be very rewarding. It, seeing those careers take off, I tell you, is one of the best feelings in the world. I know it has been for me, and I think it would be for you. Now, if, let me ask you a question. What kind of employee problems are you having, and what are you doing to help rectify it? Share in the comments below so we can share with other business owners so we can share with other business owners that they're not alone, that these are very common problems that everybody has, and maybe throw out some ideas on how they can handle it based off of what you've learned. And if you wanna learn more about your business, make sure you check out these other videos because we're gonna help you make more money in your business. I'll talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now.